Hello folks, um, I'm going to talk about privacy-centric projects and uh, now the last few uh, few lectures were about security and uh, I mean the, the, the concepts are all basically the same thing. Um, it, we have containers too, it's just that our container is in fact the web browser. Um, but it's also about sustainability, um, trying to make a project sustainable um, and uh, able to survive in the long term. So sustainability, um, well, basically sustainability is what you get when you have every user of this of the, the project be a contributor of some sort. And for proprietary, that's easy-ish because everybody just contributes some money. Open source, you contribute skills. And cloud, free cloud, uh, freemium, it's you're contributing personal data and you're contributing to being part of that um, community. Now... So what we have, and, and this, this uh, CryptPad is, um, it was what I'm presenting this on. Um, so the old standard was that we had the desktop. All your data was private by default because it sat on the desktop. Um, there was a problem of piracy, uh, but users um, and users without money were unable to participate uh, and unable to contribute using their, their skills. Open source came along and... Um, it be, it allows people to um, to contribute to the sustainability by way of uh, their technical know-how. However, that um, leaves uh, users without so much know-how as often uh, not so able to participate. And then we end up seeing lots of um, uh, middleware and uh, programming tools do really well in the open source. And then like um, software for the end user, it's not so easy. Cloud is another thing. It's kind of a mix of proprietary and uh, hosted freeware. Um, they kind of they solve the piracy problem because they don't actually give you the software. Um, users contribute personal data, and they also contribute to building an ecosystem. And that ecosystem is what gives the cloud providers some staying power against the next one coming along and disrupting them. Um, <clears throat> and importantly, cloud is is kind of in some way uh, democratic because it, it, it accommodates users that don't have either technical know-how or money to contribute uh, because they contribute sort of with their feet. Um, however, then came the GDPR, and uh, th this has been a really interesting uh, <clears throat> thing that happened recently. It, it clarified the question of who owns the personal data. Um, that's the person. That's, that's done. Um, so, and <clears throat> my personal feeling is that, so you have the, the right to be deleted, the right to all these things. I find, I think that in the long term, we're going to find that the requirement that services must allow export of personal data is going to be really one of the biggest, most important uh, aspects of the GDPR because it allows these um these these companies to be disrupted because another one can can set up or an, an open source project can set up and say oh yeah we take Twitter imports uh, just export your Twitter and you can import it here and you can you can be you can just move here so people can vote with their feet a lot easier than they could in the past so Cryptpad what is Cryptpad well I'm I'm um, I'm uh, presenting on Cryptpad. It's kind of like a Google Docs, except the server doesn't know what you're typing, and that's really important because it's like the desktop model that we used to have, but it's also like it, it's also it's a cloud service, but the server only sees encrypted data, and it's all encrypted in the web browser that's running on this this laptop. <clears throat> So that's similar in design to like Signal or Wire or WhatsApp or Matrix. Um, these this encrypting things and then sending them end to end, um, it's it's pretty well understood for messengers. But what Cryptpad takes it a step further and uses it for things that are not just sending messages. You, you can collaborate on a document together. So what we have, their features, we have a rich text editor, which uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you in a minute. Um, markdown, code editor, presentation editor, which you're looking at, the Kanban board, whiteboard. Um, What's important is that all this stuff is using the same underlying API. You basically, you develop a crypt app and it's it's running on encryption uh, right from the start. So you don't need to develop the encryption each time. The security model. Um, the security model is that 
basically the server has no power over you unless it is able to make you run uh, code that's not the code that it should be. So that's kind of a problem because the server does give you the code. And so you have to trust the server to give you the right code. But once you get that code, then, then the server can't peek at what you're doing. Um, sustainability model. Well, we're kind of working on that, but uh, what we're looking at doing is some open source, some cloud. We're hoping that people will uh, pay for features, pay for additional storage. Um, we give away the source code. Uh, we can have paying apps, which CryptPad just by default doesn't load them unless you've paid for them. And obviously being open source, people can just break that. But we have this idea of making an authenticity signature, which says this is the code that is not going to own your data, but it also has some rules that, for example, you can't use uh, extended features without paying for them. So we're trying to go the direction of, yes, it's open source. Yes, there are things you have to pay for still. Um, next steps, well, we're looking at editing of office documents and uh, stronger permissions model. Um, Federation is possibly on the menu, but uh, I want to show you something that um, I, nobody's, nobody's seen this yet. It's been developed basically today and yesterday and this morning and five minutes ago. Um, it's uh, client side, uh, securing of client side code. So I told you that the server gives you the code and um, if, if any bad code is running in the website context, as, as you probably know, that's just a total compromise. There's nothing left. And the server, can, the server, you have to trust it. It can send you basically anything. So there's a, there's a solution that a, the HTML5 people gave us, which is called sub-resource integrity. And so this is how you include a script into your website. But that script, it will you, the, the browser will ask the server, what is that thing? And the server can send whatever it wants. If you do this, then the browser will ask the server for the thing, the server will give it the thing, and then it will do a hash check on that. And if it, the thing is not exactly the thing that hashes to that big random number, then the, the browser will not load it. So the server can only send you one thing. But how do we get the hash? Well, you can have a manifest of all the hashes of everything that everything in, in the crypt pad, then you can have a signed hash of the manifest, and then you can have a bootloader, which checks the signature, and the bootloader can be included in the HTML file, and which is, and the bootloader and the HTML file are never updated. It sounds pretty complicated. It's a bit complicated. The idea is that you have a chain of trust. This verifies this, which verifies this, which verifies everything. But there's a chicken and egg problem. The server can still send you a different HTML file and just remove the key or send the wrong key or anything. So number one solution is to just cache the HTML file forever. That's trust on first use. That works reasonably well. The second solution is a browser extension which will check a signature on the HTML file. You need to, you need to root your trust somewhere. Um, so rooting it in a browser extension, basically you have to come back to what, what's the key that you trust that to sign everything else. So I'm going to show you something. Um, there is an experimental branch, um, which I didn't give you the name of and, but I'm going to show you the code and show you, show you it running. So this is a little crypt pad I have running on my laptop and uh, I'm gonna reload and it's very boring. It just loads up and does what you'd expect it to do. Now, if I were to go and change a file, oh, first I'm gonna check that uh, git status. Okay. Sig. I'm gonna check this in, this is get nonsense just because I did this two minutes ago and okay checked in okay cool now reload everything works everything's fine now 
if I were to go and change the code a little bit, like something like this, I added an alert here, hello world, right? That's, that's changing the code. That, that could be an attack. That could be something that sends your keys to another server. That could be anything, anything evil, right? You reload and it doesn't work because it didn't save it. Then you reload and now what we're seeing here, and I don't, I'm not sure if you can see that, but basically it says that the, the file that I just changed has um, uh, integrity check has failed, and so the resource has been blocked. And that's a decision that was made by Chrome, by the web browser. Um, I can't, once, once you've committed to this, you can't work around it, right? And in fact, I can, I can fix this. I can get rid of this code again, and it'll work again. So go back to what it was before, and it, it loads, loads my document, everything is fine. Now, suppose I wanted to make an update to CryptPad. I'm gonna put this, whoops, I'm gonna go back here and put my silly code here, save. Now, I'm gonna go into git and, and uh, git diff, show you, okay, I've made one change. Now, I'm going to rebuild the manifest. So go through the history until I find, okay, gen manifest. All right, so we gen manifest. Now I'm gonna show you the diff now. Okay, so what did we do? We changed the code there. We changed the hash of the, that code here in the manifest, and we changed the hash of the manifest here, and we got a new signature, a signed hash of the manifest here. So there's a new signature. And that new signature should work. Now, now we've done that. Let's reload and what's wrong? It blew up. Integrity of the resource. Did I fail to save? Oh yeah. Let me and Restart the server as well. Yeah, and there we go. We got hello world has just popped up because that code now has run and you'll see that once you dismiss that, it loads CryptPad as it should. Now, again, to go through, we have a manifest that has names of JavaScript files and hashes of JavaScript files so that everything is is hashed in there. That gives you the authenticity of every JavaScript file in CryptPad. Then this is the version file, which contains the uh, signed hash of the manifest. Then that, the public key that verifies that signature is here in the, in the secure boot file. And the secure boot file is referenced here in the HTML file. However, as I said, the server can send you the wrong main HTML file. But we, we have one more step, and that the HTML file is signed with a PGP signature using, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, plug this project, WebExed signed pages. That is signed with signed pages, and signed pages is a Chrome extension which will verify, and you can see right here that signed pages has verified that uh, CryptPad loads correctly. And to show you what happens if you change that, I'll just go here and add an, and enter anything. Doesn't, doesn't matter what it is. And then you reload. And yes, it works, but <clears throat> signed pages for some reason doesn't do the right thing. That was the part that I just did today. Anyway, let's try something like a little bit. Wait, yeah, that's the right one. Reload. Mm, yeah, okay. Now when I, when I actually make a change that has significance other than adding white space, now you see it's turned to an X. You have the wrong code. So signed pages is now saying something is wrong. Um, so 
there, there you have it. There's a chain of trust that goes from a Chrome extension to the HTML file to the secure bootloader. The bootloader uh, loads a, a signature that allows for updating, that loads a manifest, that loads all the files in CryptPad, and that way you can be sure that the server is not serving you the wrong data. Um, and I'm gonna, let's see, git branch. Okay, okay, it's called code integrity. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation and fix that. There we go. So uh, I, I invite you guys and, and ladies to check out this, um, this, this branch of CryptPad, I think it's, I think that's the right way to do it. Branch, no, that's not it. That's not the right way to do it. Take the, uh, I want the branch. Yeah, there we go. Code integrity, there. That's the one I want. Um, so I'll invite, I invite all of you to, uh, <clears throat> to check out this, there we go. Um, this code integrity branch of the CryptPad project, and uh, this is something that is very experimental. It's been uh, ongoing in the last couple of days, but um, this this is this is like the key to making something that goes between um, peer to peer, where you don't trust anybody, and client server, where you absolutely trust the server. It's more kind of like peer to server because you don't really trust the server, but you still use a server and you still have all the advantages of just being able to load the page in the web browser. <clears throat> Yet for the server to start serving something that's wrong, something that's not what, um, what the, uh, the authors had created in that, in that software project, the server, that will not work. So you don't have to worry so much about the server being hacked or the authors being malicious, you can be fairly sure that what is on GitHub, that you can read the code, is what is on CryptPad FR. Uh, <clears throat> that's, that's me, I'm reachable on Mastodon and email and Matrix, in fact. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? Thank you very much, Caleb, great talk. Thank you.